Hey guys, I'm Anthony Bresnik and we're here at Entertainment Weekly's Comic-Con headquarters, high above San Diego for Comic-Con 2018 and the cast of Mr. Mercedes, which is back on the AT&T Audience Network, Hi. August 22, right? Hello. That's the August return. 22. My mom's birthday. August oh, really? Oh, happy so birthday, they, mama. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah. So you have... So in order to celebrate... What? We're going to... Mama's birthday. birthday. Maria Hernandez's mama's birthday. birthday. <laughs> we have to they uh, watch. watch. Tune no, in. Absolutely. Okay, good. Mothers and, uh, and Mr. Mercedes. No, just, don't go, they go yeah. to, Actually, they go together well, way maybe, too well, yeah, right? Maybe my mom shouldn't watch that. <laughs> so for uh, uh, Stephen King fans, there are a lot of those people around here at Comic-Con. Uh, this is... Uh, 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 season 2 picks up uh, the third book in the trilogy that King wrote, the Hodges Detective Trilogy, with elements of the second book. Uh, Jack yeah, it's Bender, of, director, producer, tell us the... It, uh, it, it's a bit of a mashup yeah. because in Stevens, uh, the, the plan was to do the trilogy of Hodges' books. And when I first, when Stephen first sent me the galleys for Mr. Mercedes, and I was thrilled to get them and thrilled to say, yeah, I want to do the show, um, uh, because of Stevens' writing about the monsters inside these people as opposed to outside these people. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, uh, the second book, Finders Keepers, the first half of it, our heroes don't come back. So we had to figure out a way, the writers and I, to, to start our series where we left off and then let it take off from there, which is what we've done. So we don't have the two central figures. Uh, there's Brendan Gleeson as as Hodges, and uh, he's not here. Harry Treadaway is is uh, Brady Hartsfeld. He's in the hospital, the, not the actor, but the yeah. <laughs> the character after getting his head bashed in by yours truly. by yours truly by Holly uh, uh, Justine Loop. But uh, tell us where Holly is and where Hodges is because they're working together now as yeah. a detec in a detective agency. Yeah, they started a business called Finders Keepers, and um, they're solving local. Crimes, <laughs> mysteries, <laughs> um, and Holly is doing really well. She's kind of um, stepping into uh, the position of being this kind of maven of uh, of this new business, and she's um, extremely capable. You see her kind of just uh, taking over every single one of these operations with in stride and doing a really good job of it. And their dynamic is shifting and evolving and. Mm -hmm. Um, changing in a way that's really interesting. At least it was for me to watch, and hopefully it will be for the audience to watch. How do you describe their friendship, their relationship? Like, she's always been a character or, or who has felt pushed to the edge or pushed to the background. Is it is it like a surrogate father-daughter thing? Because he has a daughter who's uh, yeah, you know, I think that in, in trouble with the law and, and in, a, in a hospital, but what yeah. do you say about that relationship? I think that there's flickers of a lot of mm -hmm. things in there, um, but Mo well, the thing that resonated most for me was just that he provided this space for her to be herself. He created mm -hmm. room for her to kind of step into being completely who she was. And that was a rarity for her at the time. She hadn't um, really had that kind of support or love or mm -hmm. freedom given to her um, by anyone before Hodges. And she also, at the same time, looks up to him and is inspired by him. And so in the in the first season, there is kind of this, like, I don't know, they have this really interesting dynamic that is a little bit of a father-daughter, but also friendly. Mm -hmm. And then in the second season, you kind of see their, like, relationship shift and change, and you see them kind of rely on each other mm -hmm. in different ways and see how they, as in any intimate relationship, um, push each other to yeah. become their best selves and grow through the parts of themselves that may be a little bit One, one of the threads difficult. of the show, which is essential to have brilliant actors like we have sitting here today and those who aren't here in our show, is that the everybody's lost in their own way. Mm -hmm. and, and they're trying to find their way to the best possible life and how to live that. And everybody's broken. And certainly the characters in our show are they're broken by Brady Hartsfield and what he's done and broken before. So yep. everybody in the way they connect to each other are struggling to find their way. Well, that brings us to you, Brita Wool. Your character, Lou, she didn't. She was close with Brady before she knew the truth about him. Now she knows he's a serial killer, tried to kill you, but you, bad grass is hard to kill, you survived. <laughs> and uh, where is <laughs> yeah. she as season two picks up? Um, 
I feel like I should acknowledge that there is a marching band marching that has band just, now. and I feel like it's providing me some sort of like epic, like in season two, <laughs> and then the horns come in. Um, I think that um, to in, in my story, we get to mm-hmm. learn a lot more about me in season two, and we learn about a little bit from where I'm coming from, and it, it's a little bit of a mirror shadow to Brady Hartsfield's upbringing and his life and his relationship with his parents, not not exactly she's, like that relationship. She's not as twisted, but she's she's had a more like, I guess, a, a sort of more common experience of being pushed aside, right? She's. I mean, in season two, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see a little bit more about um, how I've been forgotten by society mm-hmm. and how that sort of brought Brady and I together as friends and together as um, mm-hmm. comrades, uh, and then he stabs me. <laughs> In which case, season two is me uh, evaluating my instincts around danger. Mm -hmm. If you have a good barometer for determining whether somebody is going to harm or hurt you or emotionally hurt you, and you are completely wrong about Mm -hmm. that, it is very hard the next day to go out into the world and have uh, trust in the world. So... I think it's a beautiful story this season uh, for me and the story, Lou Linklater, of recovery and um, the how actually challenging and dense and thick um, that is in the wake of a violent act by someone you know. So Maximiliano, you play the district attorney. Yes, indeed. Uh, I play uh, uh, assistant district attorney Antonio Montez, who's in charge of the homicide unit for Bridgeton, Ohio. And I'm tasked with um, bringing Brady Hartsfield um, to justice mm-hmm. and to prosecute him. Um, it just there's just the hiccup that he's in a coma. So, so, you gotta, so you, yeah, that's just he's like of, one of the only people on earth who wants him to get better. Right? Absolutely, I am one of those. I, you know, I, I, it's it's this show is driven by uh, people who've been hurt by Brady and their agenda on how they have closure, will find justice, and mine is wake this dude up. Because I, my agenda is I want to propel myself with some. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm an ambitious character who doesn't see himself just remaining an assistant district attorney. He wants to be something, governor, senator, something. He, he wants to propel himself, and he's going to use the serial killer and, and you know to make the trial of the century, be on TV, be that yeah. guy, and 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 push himself forward. So last season, Stephen King came to the set and he shot a cameo appearance. I don't know if we're going to get that in season two, but did you guys all get to hang with him? Was he sort of uh, out and about, or did he stay? Stephen didn't uh, visit this season mm-hmm. in in the same way. Mm-hmm. And um, he's very proud of the show, and he loves what season two I'm sending him cuts uh, and uh, considers it one of the best adaptations of his work. And uh, I think we're we're doing his work proud season two also. What was it like when he did visit last season? Did I you got guys? to meet him. Yeah. It was my first day in Charleston, actually. I hadn't even shot yet. And I came to visit the set and just see what it was like. And I met him. And first of all, he's like very handsome, like surprisingly <laughs> handsome and tall, which was wild. And nice. then on top of that, <laughs> Uh, he, someone introduced him to me and he was like, oh, nice to meet you. And they were like, she plays Holly. And immediately he goes, I love Holly. <laughs> and I immediately felt this like kind of simul- simultaneous like reaction of, oh, like, yay. And also like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> I, like, I hope I don't let him down. That like, that bar is pretty high. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was awesome though. I- he wrote Holly into his new novel, The Outsider, which you have yes. the rights to. Yes, and we're Richard Price is writing it, and uh, we're going to be taking it out very soon. This probably puts you on the spot, but shared universe? Do you get to play in the next we, one? It, it, not, <laughs> there, there are certain issues with continuing with the story um, and not story, but I couldn't wish for a more wonderful actress. Yeah, to we'll continue, probably no. but <laughs> no, 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 not at all. You never know. Stranger things have happened in the yeah. Stephen King universe. Yeah, exactly. All right, thanks a lot, Thank guys, you. for being here, Thank Mr. You. Mercedes. Thank you. August twenty second on Audience Network.